Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld. Uh, I'm Principal Architect at Dell, and tonight we're going to talk about um, how to build the new crowbar build. Uh, it takes a bit of time, so I'm going to start moving right away, but I'm starting us at the cloud server screen for Rackspace because we're going to get our server right here for it. Uh, so I'm going to take you through the entire process. Uh, of course, these steps are going to be repeated on my blog. We're going to use a 1010, Bunty 1010 server. We only need a half gig of RAM, so if we can do this in an hour uh, of real time, the video is going to be 15 minutes, then um, uh, it only cost us three cents. So crowbar, so we're going to do a crowbar build server, and we're going to let Rackspace build this up for us, and in a couple minutes I'm going to get an email uh, and start accessing my server. So here's what our password's going to be. I'm going to store that so I can log into the system. And we're going to find out the IP address right here. So it's configuring our system. Here's my SSH window. I'm waiting for the configuration to be complete right down here. Let's see. Move out of the way for it. Active, so the server's ready. Let's find, get down to the IP address so I can SSH into it. Root at Alright, so let me log in. Brand new server. I have to take the key. Get my password in there. Uh, this server won't exist by the time you're watching this video, so uh, password's not going to do you much good. Besides, I'm changing it, which I highly recommend you do. So now we have a new password. Now we have to go through the steps to prepare the system. Uh, so, uh, what the first thing we're going to need is is Git, because uh, that's how you get all the crowbar bits. So we're getting Git, and we're going to go through the process. There's a couple things I'm going to do that'll we'll, we'll pause and not make you watch, but most of it's so fast on these cloud servers that um, it doesn't take that long. Uh, so, the next thing we need is our GitHub, our, the Git URL. In this case, I'm just going to do the read only. All right, thank you. So now we need that um, repo. So I'm going to do a Git clone, and I'm going to take my repo address. Thank you. And I'm going to pull in the repo. So far, pretty straightforward. That was nice and fast. We're going to go into the repo. So we're going to cd into crowbar. And then we are going to um, get our additional components. So one of the changes, this is the most significant change, is that we're using git submodules to bring in all the subcomponents. So I need to initialize those submodules before I can build. And then I need to update those submodules. And this is going to pull in all of the secondary repos. Um, right now we're using a branching strategy, so when things branch, we actually put other repos, um, other submodules into those branches. Um, nice and fast to get all these Git repos out. And if I went to go and try and build it right now, uh, it would tell me that I can't start because I'm missing components. So I can show you what that would look like. Build crowbar. It's going to say I can't do it because I'm missing um, app get components, so I can get those. Uh, it's missing D bootstrap. It, I also know that it's missing uh, MKI SOFS. So we can go ahead and get those things in. And try and build again, and it's going to say, hey, wait a second, I can't build yet, you're missing Sledgehammer. No problem. Let's go get Sledgehammer built. So, for building Sledgehammer, we have to do something very similar. We are going to need the Sledgehammer um, GitHub. So let me pull that up right here. Uh, it's somewhere down in here. There it is. So let me grab that. Thank you. And then I have to clone uh, Sledgehammer. There we are. 
sledgehammer is tiny. Uh, because of the way we've done it, we don't want to leave the name sledgehammer, our crowbar dash sledgehammer, we're going to call it sledgehammer. That's the default path in, in our build, so we need to do a rename there. And then what we want to do is start trying to build sledgehammer. So let me go into sledgehammer. Uh, and all of our build scripts are very friendly in that they'll tell you what you're missing if you can't proceed. So uh, let me get those pieces. I just need RPM, and I know I'm also going to need Ruby. Ask me for that in the next step, so I'm going to go ahead and ask for it now. Get that over with. All right, so at this point, if we try running Sledgehammer again, it's going to say, hey, wait a second, you don't have the CentOS um, 5.6 image. It actually tells us exactly what we need to do to get it. Um, so I'd need to take, I'd need to do a wget for that address. So I would do a wget, I've pasted it into the clipboard, edit, there's my address, and I could start doing the wget. That's going to take a long, long time. Uh, and I'm going to save that step. So I'm going to pause, I'm going to pull it in, and then we're going to proceed after I have the file. So the trick I'm using here uh, that I don't want to make you watch is that I'm using SCP from a server I've already set up uh, that has the ISO on it. But something to note in the middle of all this screen is you can see I started with my SCP of my external address of that cloud server. Uh, all that stuff was going fine. It was going pretty slow. So I stopped and said, wait a second, this is the public IP address. So I was routing all the traffic through Rackspace's firewalls. And instead, I stopped that and switched it to my internal address so the system could go on the local networks. And in that case, you can see my uh, transfer rate is much, much better. Uh, so I have nearly twice the bandwidth in and out of this machine because I'm not transferring across the... Uh, external infrastructure but using the internal infrastructure. So once again we got another 12 minutes to go and only a 15 minute video so I'm pausing. So now that we've uh, gotten our file downloaded it's time to take the next step so I'm gonna do a, another build step and it's gonna say hey wait a second you have the image but you haven't set the path to it this allows you to put the path wherever you want so I need to export the sent OS ISO and I need to set it to our current path where I just downloaded to. So let's do that. Sledgehammer. So I got home directory sledgehammer and the CentOS image right there. Good. So now that I've set that path, now I've completed the last step to start building sledgehammer. And sledgehammer is going to start its thing and get that build going. Uh, this is also going to take a bit of time. So I'm going to let this run in the background and come back when it's done. So we're done uh, building Sledgehammer. Um, it takes a long time, so be prepared. The good news is, once you've built it, it's built, and you don't have to uh, worry about it. Uh, or you can skip this step, and you can download the uh, components uh, from pre-built from uh, crowbar.zeagle.com uh, where I have uh, sled the sledgehammer tar so if you want to find out where the uh, sledgehammer um, file is it is in the sledgehammer bin directory um, I found that sometimes it takes a little while for the operating system to rec recognize it's there. So the first time I go looking for it, I don't always find it. Um, but it should be there after you've completed the build and you can CD into the bin directory uh, and find it there. Uh, the good news is once it's in this location, Sledgehammer bin, uh, then the crowbar build will find it uh, and use it automatically from there. So let's go back to our crowbar directory. So we're back in crowbar. And at this point, we've completed all of the prereqs needed to start building Crowbar. So I can do a nice build of Crowbar. And it's going to go through and download a whole bunch of components. Um, 
that's perfectly normal for it to do that. It's uh, going to only do that the first time that you build Crowbar. Uh, after it's downloaded these components, uh, it only not need, now needs to download the changes uh, for, for additional builds, and we'll go through that process after we've completed these downloads and cached them. So I'll come back after we've uh, pulled down some pieces off the internet. All right, and now we have finished creating our ISO. So we have a ISO, tells us it's delivered. And here is our ISO based on our current build tag. So I can do a LS, here is our ISO. So all that's very well and good. This has built the basic um, crowbar ISO. It has not built our OpenStack components. Um, today is September 20th. Our all of our OpenStack components aren't available yet, they're not all uploaded, but while I have your attention, I'm going to show you how you could build them uh, and what the process would be to do that. It's, it's very straightforward. So what I want to do is I want to look at all the Git branches that I have available. So in this case I have this OpenStack build, so what I need to do is I need to get that branch. Uh, the components I need are, are associated with that. So I need to do a git checkout. Uh, let's see. I want to do a origin OpenStack uh, So I have now checked out. I'm in a detached state, which is fine. I can I'm not trying to make any changes. Um, so I can do a git pull. See what branch I'm on. So I started down this path with the detached head. I'm going to switch and actually use a uh, attached branch. Uh, for simplicity, I'm going to keep the names the same. So it's basically the same command. I'm just creating a local branch for it. Okay, so I've done that, and I can do I can check my branch. So you can see I switched to the OpenStack branch. The catch here is that I have different submodules or additional submodules. So when I initialize my submodules again, it finds three new branch three new submodules that I didn't have before. So this branch is slightly different, and then I need to actually get those. So I've initialized them. Now I have to do an update for that. And it's going to say, oh, you don't have the latest on those, those three new uh, submodules. It pulls them in, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So now when, it, it, when I do a build, so let me do a git pull, make sure I have the latest. I'm up to date. So now what I want to do is when I do a build, it's going to identify that there's some missing pieces because I've just added all these submodules. It's going to go start adding them. It's going to pull in a whole bunch of pieces and it's going to go through the build process. So, this build process will take a couple minutes because we have additional um, components and applications that we're installing. So, now you can see we finished with our ISO build uh, and it's created, it's replaced that other ISO. Uh, with a cactus build ISO uh, that contains our, our last bits. Now note, this is not a working build. Uh, we have not, we're, we're working on Diablo right now, so we haven't invested the time in fixing cactus uh, after the modularization. So please be patient. If you want our cactus bits, use the cactus tag and the old instructions for doing the build. Uh, but this should be enough to get you started. And I am out of time. Good day and good night wherever you are.